All right, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we have another one of Asus's Republic of Gamers boards. This is an X79 motherboard. It's there at Rampage 4 Formula motherboard. It's the middle board between the Gene and the Extreme. Uh, for many overclockers, the Formula series, even in their Maximus line, all of that, seems to be the sweet spot for getting the most out of the board. You don't have a lot of the extra features that you get with the Extreme, but you also have considerably more than you get with the Gene. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board itself and see what we get. Of course, as is, uh, seems to be the case with most uh, high-end motherboards now, you do have a nice little flap that opens up, gives you a shot of the motherboard underneath. You can see the layout here, it's pretty nice. You do have four RAM slots instead of the full eight that you see on some of the other high-end motherboards. And of course, on the inside, you have a lot of extra marketing material. This is going to give you information on some of the features that ASUS feels are going to be the best for this particular motherboard and for the market that it's actually aimed at. Um, you have things like your Extreme Digi uh, Plus 2 engine, which we've been talking about the Extreme Digi Plus engine for a very long time. It is very nice. You have your Su Supreme FX3, and it's also got the PCB segregation. You have your X socket, <laughs> which they've got a nice little tagline there for it. Kaspersky Antivirus, which is uh, in there. You have Daemon Tools Pro Standard. That's going to be included in this. And of course, as with all of the newer motherboards, you're going to have your PCIe Generation 3. It's PCIe Generation 3 ready up there. And we'll go ahead and flip it around and take a look at what we've got on the back. In keeping with most of the uh, Republic of Gamers boards, you've got a decent list of specifications on the back. They do show you what your I.O. panel is going to look like. And you also have a reiteration of some of the features that they feel are very important to this board, such as the Supreme FX3, the Extreme Engine Digi Plus, the X Socket, and of course the multi-GPU support. Um, well, that covers the outside of the box. We're going to go ahead and pull everything out, show you what you get with this board, as well as show you some of the features of the motherboard itself. All right, so as we're looking at this, we pull out. ASUS has a typical box inside of a box function, uh, not function, but set up for their boards. You have one box that actually has the motherboard in it that replaces the static bag. This is on a lot of their higher-end boards. And then, of course, you also have a box that has all of the goodies. You can see right here, you got pretty much everything you need inside this box. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual individual features that you have in here. And we'll show you everything that comes inside here. You have the new Do Not Disturb sign. Uh, we've seen this in multiple boards for the Republic of Gamer stuff. You now have a new manual that gives you a better explanation on how to use the ROG Connect. You have their Q connectors. These are nice. They let you uh, plug in some of the external, uh, sort of like your front panel I.O. and your USB, and then plug that block directly into the motherboard. You don't have to worry about taking a look at tiny writing on there or reading through the manual to figure out where everything goes. You have your I.O. shield with the uh, nice padding in behind, behind it. Gives you a little bit easier way of putting it in. You have your ROG Connect USB cable. You have a three-way SLI plug or bridge. You have a two-way SLI or crossfire bridge, another two-way SLI or crossfire bridge. You notice they're different links, so this gives you the option of setting these up in different PCIe ports. You have ASUS's nice um, SATA 3 cables. These are the nice, uh, a little bit more expensive cables. You have your standard black, what they call their PCI, or, or excuse me, SATA 2 cables. You also have an additional mount here. So we'll talk about this a little bit uh, in detail a little bit more. Alright, of course you have your manual and some stickers if you like to put those on your cables. You have your uh, drivers and utilities DVD and then as we said you have your manual and then of course there's a sheet with some errata as uh, the printing versions of these change and some of the standards or features may change also. Underneath all of this you, of course, have your Republic of Gamers sticker. Everybody loves those. It has the sunburst for the Republic of Gamers. For some reason, to us, these always seem like they're a little bit yellowed. But, you know, once you pull them off and you get them stuck to the side of your case, they look pretty good if you're into that sort of thing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this all put back in the box. We'll pull out the motherboard and show you some of the features of that. All right, we're back, and we're going to take a look at the actual layout and the design of the motherboard. So we'll go ahead, and as you can see, it's a full ATX-style motherboard. And you have the, uh, the new cooling system which uses their, their coating that we saw on their Sabertooth boards that actually allows a little bit better heat dissipation from the heat sinks that cover the power regulation and some of the other modules on the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and start at our normal spot where we kick things off up here in the upper, uh, upper left hand corner, excuse me, upper right hand corner. 
and we'll take a look at what we've got in some of these um, some of the options up here in the corner of course you'll see the uh, board mounted power and reset switch there's also a slow mode switch that's up here this is actually for if you're using LN2 it's going to allow you to adjust the way the motherboard responds to power uh, pushing the slow mode is going to give you a little bit better overclocking with LN2 and avoid some of the hassles that come from freezing um, you can also see you have a, a set of dip switches here that actually allows you to turn off your PCIe ports you can shut them all off leave one on shut off one or two so you can still run SLI all of that you have your typical 24-pin uh, power connector for ATX power. Right behind that, if you take a look here, you can see that you have two 4-pin PWM fan headers. You also have a USB 3 front panel header. And then just some other options. You have your diagnostic LEDs up here. You have one of your uh, flat press buttons. Uh, it should be memory go up here. You also have your diagnostic LEDs and another 4-pin power uh, PWM fan header that's going to be for your CPU. Of course, you can see the... Uh, two of the four quad channel memory banks that we have again we as we mentioned before you only have four instead of eight this has been attributed to being able to run the system a little bit more stable when you have that quad channel memory by reducing the number of dims available you shorten your traces you reduce power overhead all of that it's supposed to give you a little bit better overclocking so far we haven't seen it but we'll see how asus actually works that out uh, we saw the same thing on the gene so we'll see how it works out on the formula, which is usually a much better overclocking board even than the extreme in many cases. So we'll go ahead and zoom back out here and do a little bit of a turn. And we'll take a look at the CPU socket. Now the CPU socket is going to be your typical X79 2011 socket, but what ASUS has done is if you don't like these extra connectors here, if you've got something that you want to put in there that might not use these, or you might want to just punch through the board, it has its own back plate that you want to use, you can actually remove this entire socket and replace it with this. It will replace the entire back panel. All you have to do is go ahead and unscrew these and ASUS has actually included a Torx bit that fits them so that you can go ahead and pull this entire socket off, put this on the back, and all it's going to cover is going to be the CPU socket itself. They're calling it their X socket, which is kind of a nice feature. Gives you a little bit more flexibility for overclocking, putting different size pots, whatever you want on this board, without being limited by this uh, this CPU bracket that Intel has, uh, you know, sort of mandated with the X79 and the 2011 motherboards. Also, want to point in on the capacitors. We've talked about these before. ASUS has always made very good component choices when it comes to their uh, motherboards as a whole, but especially with the Republic of Gamers. They really pick out good uh, components that are going to allow you to expand the functionality of this, push it a little bit farther. Uh, you have some chokes that are made of a particular alloy that gives you more flexibility as far as, as uh, thermal envelope, power envelope, all of that, is, and the capacitors are the same thing. They've chosen them very wisely. Taking a look at the back, right here you can see that we've got our 8-pin uh, auxiliary power connector in a very awkward spot. You have some uh, large capacitors here. This is going to be difficult again. As always, we highly recommend that you pick up an extension cable, plug that in there before you have, the, uh, have to throw it in your case, and you'll be fine. Uh, you have another header here, another 4-pin fan header here. You also have another uh, clear CMOS button that's going to be right back here in this area. And then, of course, you have your cooling, which is a little bit larger. You know, it's going to be oversized to make sure that you can keep all of this cool and operating in its best uh, efficiency. Moving down, you see that we have one of the standard 4-pin Molex connectors that's going to provide power to the PCIe area. And then we'll move down and take a look at that area now and talk about what ASUS drops into the mix here. You have four X16 mechanical slots. As with most motherboards now, you're not going to get full X16 electrical. The uh, uh, slots 1 and 3 are going to be full X16 electrical. Slots 2 and 4 are going to be 8X only ever 8x uh, you're not going to get any more than that so you flip it over to the back and you can see as we've shown you in the past you have your x16 pinout and then you have your x8 pinout and you can of course see your x1 uh, pinout there so that covers that um, section of it of course you do have your supreme fx3 that's here and you can also see that line that runs through the board that gives you that pcb segregation uh, a lot of people have looked at that as a gimmick, and in a way, it kind of is, especially with the LED that pops up to show you that. But it also does prevent crosstalk from some of the other traces that are on the board and will allow that, that card to actually function a little bit better without some of that interference. You should get a little bit cleaner audio. Um, it's not something you can really quantify, but if you're listening for it, you can tell the difference between the standard audio if you were to drop a card in and regular onboard audio for most of the, the other uh, motherboards that are going to be out there. 
All right, looking along the bottom of the board, you see you have your audio front panel header. You have two additional, uh, well, actually three additional uh, four-pin power headers, uh, excuse me, four-pin fan headers. They're PWM fan headers. You also have a BIOS switch button that's going to allow you to switch between the dual BIOS that are actually on this board. You also have several USB ports. This is going to be your front panel, and that covers a lot of what we've got here. And then looking at the actual ports as far as SATA connectivity, you have four SATA 6, four SATA 6, and four SATA 2 that are going to be right here on the front. This is a nice cluster and it's going to be a little bit more beneficial to people in this price range. Again, ASUS has made their comments that they're looking to put features into their boards that matter to the market that they're aiming them at. So we're going to take a little bit uh, closer look at the cooling. One of the things that you'll notice as you look at the board is that the cooling is not connected. On a lot of boards they tend to connect the cooling. You'll see that the power management uh, cooling actually will run directly into any cooling for any uh, bridge connections such as an NF200 or anything like that and then it of course will spiral down into the PCH cooler. Here you don't see that. There's no direct connection. We've kind of got a little bit of tight space going on here. But you have the, these are two separate ones so you, you should, you have the chance of getting a little bit better cooling out of these two separate modules. We'll be taking a look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, this design of the PCH cooler does seem to be effective, you know, especially when you have cards uh, such as uh, you know, your larger video cards that are going to push a lot of air out through here. It can keep that, that PCH running very cool. But we do want to focus in on what's going on with the power during this review, so we'll be taking a look at that and actually doing some temperature measurement on that, especially during overclocking to make sure that it keeps up with what it's supposed to keep up with. And you're not going to run into any heat issues during those, uh, you know, that type of operation. All right, lastly, we're going to go ahead and look at the I.O. ports. You have your PS2 port. A lot of companies are finding out that when you have an overclocking motherboard, if you have USB ports, a lot of times they stop working when you're in overclock mode. So they're throwing in the PS2 port just to make sure that you still have functionality with keyboard, mouse, all of that. You have your BIOS reset. You have, of course, you have an audio port there. You have uh, This is going to allow you to set up your ROG Connect, which is going to be the bottom white USB port here. You have three more USB 2.0. For USB 3.0 on this, you have a you know single gigabit LAN. You of course have some eSATA, and then your uh, audio out ports are going to be there. So that wraps up what we've got as far as the general layout and the configuration of the ASUS Rampage 4 formula. We're going to go ahead and throw in our uh, 3960 Core i7 and see what we can get out of this board, including to see uh, just see exactly how high we can push it. You know, we have some head, you know, headroom here, and we know that ASUS generally will give you those options to hit those higher clocks. We just want to see exactly how this line is going to help us, and if it will allow us to actually reach a little bit higher clock speed than we have traditionally with that, board, uh, with that CPU. So as always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.